Welcome to Nobody's Off Limits, where women are seen and heard. It's your girl, Lala E. And on this podcast, we'll be discussing topics like dating, relationships, and day-to-day life issues. I have a very special guest. Her name is Jada. Hi, Jada. How are you doing? Doing good. How was your... I'm good. How was your weekend? It was pretty good. That's I can't good. complain. That's good. Okay, so today on this podcast, we'll be talking about what does mental health mean to you Did you have the mental health conversation in the African-American home? And why is it mental health overlooked in the African-American community? I know for me, my mom didn't have the conversation with me about mental health. She did. So did your mom have a conversation with you about mental health? The closest that we ever got to a conversation about mental health, I went to her like one time when we sat down and I was telling her I was depressed and I was going through it and stuff like that. And Mm -hmm. I promise you, that lady looked at me and was like, I don't. I don't get it. Like, what are you so... And you know what? I really think it's not even their fault. Mm-mm. It's their. It's really their parents. Yeah. And then their parents mm-hmm. did it to them as well. They don't teach us really about mental health. And how to work through our problems. It's yes. Kind of just like, well, we got, mm-hmm. we got stuff to do. So. I can admit, me and my mom, we did not have a good... We didn't... I'm not going to say we didn't have a good relationship, mm-hmm. but I was a very... I'm not going to lie. I was a very bad teenager <laughs> but I was acting out because I was going through you so much her, and I wasn't getting hurt I couldn't yeah. go talk to her like my mom like well I don't really like care yeah. <laughs> like oh she and she working like all she got to do is take care of us like she really can't mm-hmm. sit down and like have a conversation with us and then I didn't have my dad growing up I don't know if you had your dad yeah. No, I ain't have mine mm-hmm. either. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're just all out here traumatized. Yes, basically. Like, we're just all freaking traumatized. Um, so I know for me, like me going through suicide and all the mm-hmm. other stuff, I put myself in therapy. You guys, therapy is very beneficial. You might think that talking to a therapist or mm-hmm. talking to someone or telling someone your uh feelings is a problem, but it's really not. These people are here to help you. They are literally certified, go to school for years to learn about all the different type of mental disorders they have. They have anxiety. They have eating disorders. They have so many disorders. You don't know what your kids are going through. Exactly. And they overlook it in the black community. Like, literally, they won't say anything about it growing up. I think it's also just like, they're not equipped in. No. Like how you said, it kind of goes back to like their parents and stuff like that. They're mm-hmm. only doing what they know how to do, exactly. how to respond, what they learned, how they had to work through their own problems when they was going through it. Because even with them, like we can clearly see y'all got some problems. Like mm-hmm. you might need to go get checked, mm-hmm. but you're never going to because therapy wasn't something Talked that, about. yeah, it wasn't like, oh, let's sit down. Let's, how are you feeling? Like, mm-hmm. what are you going through? No, it was, you got school at home and whatever else in between. Exactly. School and home, that was it. And it's like, it's deeper. Mm-hmm. It's so much more deeper. It is so much more. We go through stuff. I'm not going to lie. I went through mm-hmm. shit when I was going through a high school in high school. From friends being my friends, from me feeling insecure about myself, mm-hmm. especially me already being a plus size girl mm-hmm. in, a, in a world full of all these other girls. Like, I still have to fight. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of stuff. I wish I could have talked to my mom. I did it. And it made me turn to acting out. And it made me turn to cutting myself and trying to commit suicide, which is not the answer. It's not. <laughs> it's not Please the don't. answer. Okay. It doesn't hurt nobody else. Exactly. You. It literally. I'm not like, lying to tell you the story. Once I did it, I, okay, so I took a whole bunch of pills, mm-hmm. right? So I'm in the room and I'm just falling asleep. My mom literally... <laughs> She literally took me from out the room, got my brother, because my brother's, like, way taller than me, got my brother, put me in the tub, and this lady was drowning me out of the freaking <laughs> She's like, you want to kill yourself? I got you. I got you. But when I went to the hospital, and I went to um the hospital that's down here, a lot of people don't probably know what it is. I'm not going to say the name of the hospital, because I don't want to get banned. But anyways, <laughs> the crazy hospital, if you were from West Palm Beach, you know the you crazy know, hospital. You know what hospital is. <laughs> Girl, I went there and I realized I wasn't crazy. Mm-hmm. These people, these people out here real deal. Like it is people out there who got real deal issues. Mm-hmm. I always say there's two different type of crazy. There's the crazy where you know you got a problem. Like you may have, have like depression mm-hmm. or anxiety. And you know your head be going sometimes. And then there's actual freaking crazy. Actual like, like loony Ben. <laughs> like you got and I feel like I realized I was life crazy. 
I'm mm-hmm. life crazy. These people is really mental crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, it was just like, you know what? I don't even belong here. I don't belong here. But after me getting out of the hospital, mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie, and I went home, and I got into therapy, and me and my mom relationship did get a lot better. Like, of course, we still have problems to today. That's just any parent mm-hmm. relationship. But we most definitely do have a better conversation now. And my mom is a triplet. You guys will see her on my podcast, like, later on. But the one of the triplets waited to have kids. Mm-hmm. And so, like, now when she raised her kids, I try to tell her, like, have a conversation. Like, my little cousin, she will come home and be like, Mommy, I had a bad day. I used to need to take a bubble bath. And I'm just like, Auntie, let her go. Let her go take a bath. Let her just relax because... Kids really do go through issues. And, girl, do you see the school work oh, that yeah. they have? Yeah. I don't remember that. When and was going to school? Like, <laughs> my son now, he's going into, like, third grade and stuff like that. So, he wanted my help when he was in second, like, mm-hmm. with the math. And so I'm like, what the hell is that? I, what, are you, what are y'all learning? Listen, I don't remember that in school. Mm-mm. I don't remember. And for people who don't know, I did go to school with her prior yeah. To this, but it was like middle school. And we lived, lived in the same complex. Yeah, lived like, in the same complex. We had the same best friend at mm-hmm. the time. Like we we know each other, but I know for a fucking fact we did not have Indeed. no work like that. They got these kids in third grade teaching them fucking fifth grade work. Yeah, like how do and you it's expect the them to know? It's the levels that y'all expect them to be on, and then you see why kids snap or exactly. why they're going through it. Exactly, and then that's another thing. Speaking of kids snapping, kid, these parents who grow up and your kids don't get you don't talk to them about mental health. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to control their anger, so they go out in the world mm-hmm. and do crazy stuff. Jada, I cannot tell you how, you know for a fact, how many people we didn't yeah. to school with who are in jail or yeah. in prison or dead because they couldn't control their anger. Well, it's just like the stuff that, you know, of course, growing up where we were mm-hmm. growing up at in Westgate and stuff, it was like you were only exposed to so much. Exactly. You only had so many people around mm-hmm. you, and it was always the same the crowd, same the same crowd. people. So it was like there was really no person to look up to, so that's all they had. But then it's like, when you also go home and you can't talk about it with your parents or you don't have a friend outside of that energy and that vibe to go to or run to, it's like... Mm-hmm. I feel like we made it out. Like, mm-hmm. literally, I do because I'm not going to lie. Like, we did. I see a lot of us who are in prison, a lot of us who mm-hmm. are in jail, a lot of us who are either dead. But the ones that I do see who I have went to school with... And they're doing I'm, good. They're doing so good. I am so, good. genuinely, yeah. I am so proud of all you guys. Thank like you. it's amazing because yeah. we we from where we came from, y'all. When I tell you, like it's the hood where we was at. Yeah. <laughs> it's the hood. Every time somebody asks me, they're like, "Oh, why are you so far? Where I know you from?" And I tell them, and they be like, "Oh, yes. you from the trenches?" Yes, like, baby, the it trenches. Was not that bad. It like, was. It was bad. <laughs> I go lie, like trash outside your door. Yeah. Filled to the top type bag. At that like, time, you, when we was growing up, it wasn't really gunplay. Like, people wasn't yeah, pulling the gun. Nah, you but was they, fighting. they was, was fighting. There. We was, was scrapping. <laughs> <laughs> like, now they'll pull out a gun. They'll pull out a weapon. Now, when we was coming up, when we was coming up, baby, it was fighting. And whatever, wherever you got caught at. Exactly. I hope you had it. We might have a weapon, but it's not no gun. It's like a, a bottle, a rock, or something. Yeah. But we do not mm-hmm. do that. But now, it's like these kids, they turn into guns. Yeah, you got to be careful. They will pull out a gun and shoot you. Like, it is, and now they didn't pass that law in Florida where people freaking can carry mm-hmm. a gun anytime. What do you think these people who have no, mental issues going to do? They didn't even know what they were doing. <laughs> definitely. definitely. But they don't care. And um, have you seen the movie Call Me Tyrone? That's on um Netflix. I literally just watched that last night. Girl. I literally just watched this last night. And when it was funny when I started realizing and people as they were going through like the facility and they were seeing what people were doing and how they were getting kind of like, you know, the mind thing. And I was like, they're literally telling us what they did to the black community. It's everywhere. And we're eating it up. Eating it. it. And even that, it's like, and even then, mental health is not talked about. They don't talk Mm -hmm. about it. These mm-hmm. people don't know nothing about nothing. You got, like, in the, if you guys seen the movie, which I'm sure a lot of people have, yeah. Yeah. Call Me Tyrone is a movie um, where they cloned a guy. Girl. It's on Netflix. It's on oh. Netflix. 
It's Netflix on sponsorship. <laughs> okay? It's on Netflix, but it's wild because it's mm-hmm. like these people, they really be cloning us and they put in everything our food and like our it's hair, like hair our black girl hair products. It perms. Perms. Freaking perms. Perms. M- music. Music. Especially the music. Mm. You can tell that now that they do that in the music. Yeah. But even then, they don't talk about mental health then. They don't talk about it. They make it feel like mental health is a bad thing. But guess what? If um it's in another race, home, guess what? They're gonna talk about it. They're gonna yeah. get their child some help. Yeah. Little uh, yeah. Susie is not gonna have no problems. <laughs> how dare she? How dare she? She needs help. Mental health. We're doing great, and you do, and you decide to have mental problems. Exactly, and it's like they don't, and even me and them won't be like. People to even know their kids have yeah. mental issues. <laughs> they be hiding stuff. And I think that was crazy. Like, sometimes I really believe, like, sometimes they can be just as more fun as we are because it's like, y'all get into hard drugs. Y'all yes. out here doing crazy. Y'all out here yes. wilding out. And they make it seem like we just monkeys. Monkeys. Like, we just from the freaking wild. I feel like they trying to take us back to slavery times. Oh, yeah. Sure. That's what it feels like. And then, even then... When it comes to mental health and parents, some parents actually do want to get their kids help. They can't afford it. Yeah. They're cutting off so many things mm-hmm. for people to get assistance. Once your child turns 18 or you don't have a certain amount of something in the state of Florida, you will not get assistance. Exactly. You will not get Medicaid. You will not get health care. They will not give it exactly. to you. So how you how are you how in our community, in our little black community that we have with our people, first of all, our people already fighting each other. Exactly. All the time and shooting and killing each other. And it's crazy because I even made a comment about that. I was like, our biggest downfall is ourselves. Yes. Our biggest one is ourselves. And the sad part about it is nobody cares. No, they if don't care about it. you with a dude that lives right down the street from you, why? Or at least if y'all going to be beefing, take it back how it was back in the day. Go run your 30 it out you know what i'm saying but no they don't do that even then like with our black women that's why i wanted to do mm-hmm. a podcast with black women for people who are hearing this a lot of people i have mentioned or are coming on my podcast are black women because i love black women i have always been big on black excellence and i feel like it lacks so much in mm-hmm. our community and that's why i did i decided to do the podcast because i wanted to give people other black girls a way to express their yeah, stuff and able to something. talk about something that's really serious. Like, people just don't get it. Like, people just do not understand. Please, take your mental health serious. Even if you have to... And then, let's not even get to the parents who are killing their kids and snapping and killing oh, yeah. their children. Yeah, that is, it's ridiculous. And if yeah. they have mental issues and their parents overlooked it and they didn't say anything, and now they have kids and they don't know how to handle that. And now they are killing their children. These babies don't have a way to li- go to school, live their life. They didn't get to see the age of 18. You're taking your kid's life because you have a mental issue. If you have a mental issue, please go get the proper help that you need or find the proper help that you need. They have so many hotlines that's on free. That's free for people to use. That's online. You just have to look it up. They also do have um, Better Me Help. If you want to sponsor, yeah, Better I, Me Help. I use that; it's amazing. They have therapists that are online. You do not have go to go anywhere. They will video chat you or call you at your house, and it's also very cheap. It actually is. It's very like, reasonable. When I was going through it, I was like, "Okay, I can do a job." Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think like a lot of people, the stigma around it is like people are scared to go in front of somebody and talk with them mm-hmm. and express how they're feeling. I feel like. If you can't even do it with your friends, you're never going to be comfortable to go ahead and go do it with somebody that's random. Yeah. But at the same time, it's the best version of it because you don't have to worry about getting judged. You don't have to worry about this person telling someone else or even just thinking about you in a different light. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You're not trying to impress this person. You're literally going for help. Yeah. And I think a lot of time we grow up and our parents tell us to give it to God. Mm. All oh, the time. Yeah. I love that. I love, I love it. Give it to God. And do not get me wrong. You are supposed to. Mm-hmm. God is our savior. He is the person that keeps us going. We are. We feel like we need to stop. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you need a little bit more. You need a little bit more than just God. I mean, even when you're praying about something, you think that shit just going to materialize? No, exactly. you got to put it You have work. to manifest it. Yeah. When are you going to do your part? 
because mentally, that's why God put these therapists on this earth. Is it's for them to help us, but we don't take the proper things or take the proper resources. Steps, yeah. And the, even the right steps, even if it's small, you guys. Even if that's what I started doing. Like I do not get medicated and all the mm-hmm. other stuff. So I write my stuff down. I write it down. Before I start using mental health, I use a journal and I write down everything. Yeah. And if I feel like I'm ticked off, I will literally go write and it all down. Talk about it. Because if you keep it bottled in, it's like you're never going to be able to express it. Then you know, it's crazy. Like the best part about writing in a journal and like getting it down, you're expressing everything mm-hmm. in that moment. You're you're talking about everything. You're not missing a beat. And sometimes that's even a form of like meditation because you kind of get into like a flow. So there's things that's coming out yet that you might put on the page that you didn't even know you were feeling like. Yeah. And when you get a double back, read on it, you're like, oh, damn, maybe that's why I was feeling that way. Or that's probably like a trigger. Not going to yeah. lie, because I didn't look back at a couple mm-hmm. things. I didn't read my journal, and I'm just like, I thank God that I don't feel the way that I feel before. Because mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie, girl. I was in a um, relationship prior to the one I'm in now. And, girl, when I tell you, he was taking me through the ring. Yeah. Girl, he had me so depressed. He made me feel like I wasn't beautiful. He made me not love myself. But it's like his parents didn't teach him nothing about mental health either. Exactly. Another black man where their parents didn't teach them about mental health, so they don't know how to treat no woman. They don't know how to treat no woman. So even for me, like I couldn't go talk to my mom about it because it's like I feel like she's gonna judge me. But even if she don't, don't judge like, me, even if she doesn't, it's already in my mindset that yeah, she is. You already done psyched yourself out. You, you know what I'm saying? So when I did go talk to her, it was a very like shocking situation for me. Don't get me wrong, like I said, my mom is freaking chef's kiss now but all i'm saying is like still i get timid when i want to go tell her certain stuff because i'm so used to like the old way yeah and that's just some, like that's what some people will call like rewiring your brain mm-hmm. like you literally in those moments you literally just got to kind of tell yourself like no we're in a different space i'm trying to do better i'm trying to try something new i'm trying to get my mental right mm-hmm. so instead of like psyching myself out i'm just gonna yeah we're gonna go talk about it yeah and it's like now we and i feel like a lot of times we be so scared of our parents at 20 i'm 26 yeah i'm still scared of my mother yeah i'm still scared i'm still scared of that woman i'm still scared of my aunts as well Mm -hmm. because i like i said my mom's a triplet i was raised for all three of them I'm scared of her. And sometimes I don't want to tell her certain stuff because I don't want her to know. I don't like, want to fight mom. Know. You finna get yelled at. So I'm finna get said <sighs> crazy. And then it's like, now you're a trigger. Don't want to talk about it anymore because you're mad. And now it's shut down. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, now it's, like, like, no, it's a cycle. It. it is like mm-hmm. a cycle. And that's why like, I feel like when I do have kids, It'll be a different for my children. I, if I see my kids got some mental issues, I'm going to get them the proper help. And don't get me wrong, we ain't the only ones that's around here losing our minds when yeah. it comes to mental health. We got the Jeffrey Dahmers and the Ted Bundy's out here in the world. Now, don't get me wrong. You can't do what Jeffrey Dahmer and Ted yeah, Bundy did nowadays. Yeah, not back the way they were doing it. But they had mental health issues, too. If you go back and watch this, you watch the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Yeah, definitely. His was- daddy been no he had issues. And then what's crazy, not only did he know he had issues, he nurtured them. Nurtured. Nurtured. He, he if you haven't watched it, he literally, he, what was he doing? He Getting was like, like the role kill. The role kill. Doing that shit to him. He it's literally no, taught that man how to dispose of a body. It is no way. It is literally no freaking way. And then even to bring back um the whole topic I did before, you know, mm-hmm. if anyone who watched my podcast prior, I talked about child molestation. Yeah. It is a boy who is named, um, he's a rapper in West Palm Beach. Did you hear about that? Yo. I'm not going to name the rapper name, yeah, but not. anybody that's listening. If, you, if you're from West Palm, you know. You know, and you can also Google it. Yeah. But a rapper in West Palm Beach was abusing his wife, his girlfriend at the time. And she was pregnant. And they had a daughter. He went to jail for a domestic violence. But come to find out, he was molesting the 10-year-old daughter, and the mom knew about it. And so, I'm not going to lie. I was having a conversation with my boyfriend. I was like, I would never. I just I just would never. I no did. amount of scaredness in me, I just can't do it. And it's like, I was talking to someone else. They had a same situation like that. But then you have to look at it from the woman's perspective. She probably was so scared. Yeah. She probably was so scared that he was going to kill her or her child or exactly. her baby that she was um, pregnant and with. And then it's like, 
we're not we know that person outside we don't know what that person is like behind closed doors exactly what that person is capable of or what they've already done mm-hmm. so yeah i don't agree with her being quiet for so long i don't agree with i don't agree shit. with it i don't but then i also like I i'm said, not her I don't i'm not know what she was in i don't know what she was going mm-hmm. through i can't and that's that's the key jada say it again i am not her yeah. you're not her you're not her and a lot of people online and i had to look at that and it's like now me doing this podcast and me talking to other black women because i like i said i've been through a lot mm-hmm. of stuff and the other women on my podcast has been through a lot of stuff like you are a single mom for one and it's hard as hell. It's hard as fuck. But you would never, you are literally, your child, I see you, your child's like the main priority, your kids. Mm-hmm. Main priority. And that should be the important thing. But like you said, we are not her. We don't know how she was raised. Again, exactly. you don't know what happened with her mental. So you don't know. Maybe she was raised in an abusive environment that yeah. she think that that's okay. Or maybe she has been touched. Now, I'm not saying I don't care. I've been touched too, but I'm not going to let it happen to my kid. I think it's like, and it's, it's crazy because literally everything we're talking about, I've been having these past conversations because my oldest, like, <clears throat> he can be kind of, I don't want to say aggressive. No, I don't want to say that. But there's moments where he can kind of shut down and yeah. kind of throw those fits. Mm-hmm. And I'm starting to notice, like, around that age, I was the same way. Mm-hmm. I was feeling some type of way. And you know Billy. Yeah. Like, so around that time we were growing up and stuff, he was kind of getting into his little mm-hmm. moves and shifts. Especially by the time we got to Live Oakton, he started dibbling, dabbling in the shit. And then it was all the other yeah, people around him. Like, it, was a, it was a lot. So the focus became him. Mm-hmm. Then it was like, oh, I got to take him there. I got to do this with him. I got to do that. He going through stuff. So I kind of got pushed to the side. So from like the ages of like five to the time I got to Live Oaks, I was already feeling ways. I was already going through stuff. I'd already experienced and shit. So when I look at him, I'm like, damn, I kind of. I see the cycle. I see mm-hmm. the pattern. I see <clears throat> the anger. I see where it can go yeah. and what happened to me. So I'm like, now with him, I try to talk to him. I try to get him to open up to me, but he shuts down. He does. And I'll be like, okay, well, when you're ready to talk, you'll come to me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to push it, but we're going to talk about it. And that's in that. Listen, that's how it should be. Yeah. If your child, and I love that, and that's 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 what I come back to the mental health. Mm-hmm. If your child tells you, well, mom, you know what? I don't really feel like talking about it right now. Okay, cool. Don't be that parent to be like, well, you ain't grown this in my house. Blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. Please, just get them the time to like, and just get themselves their together. Emotions. Because at the end of the day, they are still children. They cannot put their words together the way we can. Mm-hmm. We could sit down and have a come Like, I'm sure everybody has problems at work. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And have co-workers that you have issues with. Yeah. But we are adults. We are grown. We have had kids. Mm-hmm. Like so most of us have had kids. I have it. But I have nieces and nephews. I have have raised. We are adults. We can have conversations with each other exactly. and not blow up. Or we can express ourselves in a different type of way. These kids can. Yeah. And I think that just comes, again, like it all really just does go back to the mental, how you grow up in the household with your family. Cause like how you said, we're not the same. Mm-hmm. So it's like some people are fight or flight. Yeah. Some people close down. Some people open up. Some people know how to <clears throat> kind of like get their emotions out clearly. And then some people are going to blow up and explode and then they're going to double back later and apologize. I feel yeah. like I'm mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. Like I said, my mom is a triplet. My brother and sister, my little sister has a joy syndrome. For people who don't know the Dwarf Syndrome, it's like Down Syndrome. And she also has a heart problem. So for her, she would break down or get frustrated and she yeah. just shuts down. And then there's my brother. He's the quiet one. He's like my mom. He don't really like blow up and get upset. He forgives very easily. And he's like, he just, he's also very quiet. Like he'll just go cry in a corner. Like he'll just, he won't let stuff bother him. Like yeah. that's how he is. But then there's me. I'm the oldest. I had to grow quicker. I had everything put on me. I'm a very emotional person. I will cry. I will scream. I will yell. And when I'm frustrated, I get loud. But that's when it comes to finding yourself, which will be another podcast. Yeah. Finding God. Mm-hmm. Finding God and getting the proper help that you need. And ever since I've been doing that and finding God and just like 
getting the proper help that I need because I'm in therapy. I'm not going to lie. I am because I need it. (laughs) I'm in therapy and it has helped me so much. It has. It has helped me do better. It's helped me start this podcast. I've been wanting to start my podcast for maybe a year. A year. And the guy that I was with, he was telling me, you can't do it. You can't do it. That was when knocking your dream. Yes. Knocking. And it's like that mental. And it's like also when it comes to like your mental health, the people you have around you. Of course. Like that's big. That's a big thing. And I had to learn that. I had to learn the environment that you keep around you is the people that are unbeneficial Mm -hmm. to you. And it's, see, and I learned that through like my spirituality because Mm -hmm. I got, I ended up going through my spiritual awakening within like the past like two, three years out of a relationship that I was like, I wasn't in, but I was in it, Mm -hmm. you know? And that person triggered me and I'm like, bro, I, I don't like you. So why am I letting all this bother me? Why am I out my body so much? Like, why am I not myself losing weight, going through it, literally feeling mental? And it kind of came down to the conclusion where I I had to learn to love myself a little bit more, to care about myself a little bit more, Mm -hmm. to learn when somebody isn't for me, when somebody doesn't have my best interest at heart. Like, I think it just kind of comes down to you got to know when to let go you got to know when somebody has fulfilled their lesson in your life when shit just is transactional because not every relationship or every person that you meet is going to have a a benefit for you it's like they're like a stepping stone yeah basically and that's really what it is mm -hmm. like that's what it sounded like it was like i needed to learn that specific thing in that moment to get me where i'm at now yeah. And I'm now I'm perfectly okay with that. Mm-hmm. And that's the key word just it's people think what's what's the saying my mom used to say? People are in your life for a season. Mm-hmm. A lesson or a blessing. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like like I said, the person I'm with now, we were not I didn't even see him as like a person I he would be my boyfriend. Like we were just like friends, but he was my best friend. Yeah. Like, if I had a problem, I would always go to him. And he is the one who, like, I was raised in church, but he is the one who got me back into it. Yeah. And it, I'm really grateful he did because, girl, when I tell you this whole journey of loving yourself, that is the key word. Women, men, kids, dog, fish, whoever it is, the people out there, love yourself first. If you can't yeah. love yourself, you're not going to be able to love nobody else. Okay, you're not going to be able to. It's literally no way because you don't know how to handle yourself. You don't know how to love yourself. And that's what I had to do. I had to learn how to love myself because, like I said, like you said, you was in that relationship. Girl, when I tell you that man was taking me through the ringers, he was taking me through the ringers. He made me hate myself so bad and made me feel like I was not beautiful. Again, I'm I'm a plus size girl. I never felt less confident in myself. As an adult, maybe when I was a teenager, yeah. yeah. But as an adult, I never had those problems. But he made me feel like that. He made me feel like you ain't worth nothing. Like I could go get anybody else. I could go get me somebody like Nicki Minaj mm-hmm. or and all the other stuff. Like even with that, I'll say like I don't want to say we're like rep like we're replicas of the person that we're with, but it's kind of like a mirror. Mm-hmm. So whatever that person's feeding into you, whatever that person's giving you, whatever they're like showing to you that's literally every little thing that you kind of got to take back and be like okay if i'm accepting this shit from you then that's clearly must how i feel about myself exactly so it it's kind of like a slap in the face when that mirror is put in front of you and you're like damn well now i gotta kind of change this i don't feel that way about myself but i'm letting somebody feed that into mess with my head Mm -hmm. mess with my head and then there's it comes to that once you fall in love within yourself I promise mm-hmm. you, can't nobody fuck it up. Can't nobody mess and it up. Peace. Like and peace. And peace. If someone is stressing oh you out, God. I will, girl, let me tell you something. I will cut you off very quickly. I do not care. It is a lot yes. of people that I have cut off that you probably don't see me with no more. Mm-hmm. And you probably be yeah. like, oh, well, that thing, I thought y'all was cool. <laughs> nope. Nope. I will cut you off in heart because my peace is so yeah. much more important. See, and I learned that within this year because it was a friendship that I had got rid of. Mind you, we were friends. You you know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I 
had to let that go. And it's crazy. Like, it took me to actually finally be like, no, like, I'm done. Like, it's not even about what we argued about. It's not about what we got into it about. It's not because I'm not in high school no more. I'm mm-hmm. not doing that. Mm-hmm. Tell me what you feel. And that's that. Like, I had lost my grandmother. Wow. And then we had got into it. I'm trying to figure out, like, my living situation, where I'm about to be next and stuff like that. I literally don't have the space the for you, the yeah. energy, the time, the patience. I don't have it. Mm-hmm. So at this point, it was kind of like, that was like that last try. And I was already feeling some type of way. I was already starting to get that like internal. Because you can always tell when it's t- when somebody's time is up. And you sit there, you stick it That's out, you go word. through it. Because you either have love for them, it's history, you care about them. But it's like, you know when their time is up. And I feel like that was like that last straw where God or my grandma, somebody had to be like, yo, listen, I don't know how many more times we got to tell you, mm-hmm. but this not it. And it was more so like, you don't resonate with me anymore. And every time you speak on me or there's like a situation. And that, honestly, I was kind of going through my own stuff at that time too. I was grieving. I was going through it. I didn't understand what I was feeling at the time. So it was like, you didn't add anything beneficial. And you keep trying to pull me back into this version of myself where I'm trying to work myself out of. I'm trying to learn how to communicate. I'm trying to learn how to go to people calmer without like a tone or angry or feeling like I got to, uh, 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 like I'm trying to learn that. And you're trying to bring that Be that stereotype that they always think a black woman is. Angry yeah. and mad. Like That's, I'm trying to be, hmm, yeah. I'm trying to. Peace. Your yeah. soft girl season. Yes. Soft girl season. I'm trying to have my soft girl era too. And here you are trying to bring that out of me. Listen, you have been friends with that person for a long time. Mm-hmm. I know because we was friends were in mm-hmm. middle school. And honestly, I just, I, the, uh, I was also friends with a girl. We was friends for like a long mm-hmm. time. When I say from like, before we, I was even friends with the person we talking about. Yeah. I was friends with that person. We recently just fell out like, Maybe a couple months ago, um, from a situation that happened with someone else, but it's like that's what I'm saying because it's like she was so bashing me and bashing me. Like, yes, I did say something I shouldn't have said, mind you, but at this time, this person is my sister, so it's like me telling this person something where yeah. you are around this person as well. I'm not thinking this person's going to back going going to go back and tell anyone, but you being my best friend, knowing I have always had your back. I have always been there for you. I have always, always been there. Vice versa. She has always yeah. been there for me as well. But it's like, we gonna, you gonna, we gonna continue to argue and Go we gonna be. And it's like, right. at this yeah. point, I just, went, like I said, I tell her, I even tell her now, I was like, I wish you the best. I have Seriously. no ill will towards you. I don't I like, dislike I you. I love her to death. I love but... her to death, but I just have to love her from a distance. And that's okay. And it's mm-hmm. like, I had to come to the realization with that because I was broken hearted, girl. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. That was my course. best friend since seventh grade. Yeah, because I even friend. told myself, I was like, you gotta kind of be honest with yourself in the sense where every friendship, relationship, whether it's platonic, whatever, you grieve it when mm-hmm. it's a loss. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's a friendship. Come on now. We were friends exactly. with these people for years. You know me like the back of your hand. So literally. And I think why it hurts so much from both parties is because we know each other like that. It's because we we're cool like that so it's like for you to even think of less of me for you to even do that to me it's like how dare you exactly it's hurt like, me you really gonna listen to this person hurt. and for me that's what it made me feel like you really gonna listen to this person instead over of just coming to your talk to best me. friend girl like i literally have always been there but it's like i'm not gonna keep fighting with you or keep trying to beg you for a friendship yeah. i don't beg nobody Okay, I don't beg anyone, but it seemed like that's what I was doing because I'm sitting here trying to apologize for yeah. something I didn't mean to happen or mean to be said. But at the same yeah. time, it's not like I told a friend. I told my sister, well, my then, stepsister, well, and but she was like was that. a friend, sister, whoever, you told somebody that you trusted because that's kind of sound like the same situation that happened to me. Mm-hmm. Like I went to talk to people that I trusted just to get a vibe, get something off my chest. And was told, you know, we're all going to sit and talk about it. But then the conversation happened without me. So, of course, it looked funny. It looks funny. Mm-hmm. But it's like, at that point, it was like, what can you do? You exactly. confided in somebody and they they did what they did. Okay, it's out your hands. At this point, once you apologize and you try to mend it or fix it, 
and it goes from that to them talking out their neck or saying something crazy, you lost me. You lost Cut. me. Because I came, I tried to come at this situation a different way, and you took it, you took it way out. Yeah, exactly. And then it's like, then when you start snapping and going crazy, yes. I'm going to snap and go crazy. Because at first, I'm not going to lie, it, that, that happened with me. I didn't snap at first. Like, I didn't, mm-hmm. we didn't really, like, snap at each other. But she had a, um, I'm not going to say what she had exactly, I'll tell you. Yeah, but she had an event and she didn't invite me to it, which was a big stepping stone yeah. in her life. And I was like, "Dang, you didn't even invite me!" Like, I get that you upset, but I would never right. not invite you to something that important. She like, "Why would I invite you?" And um, you did what you did, da 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 da. And then that's when I lost it because I'm like, "Girl, now now you're taking me off." Because yeah. I literally, if, first of all, this is one mistake. All these friends that you didn't have prior who didn't did go, stuff go, for, to go. you and you for quickly forget them. And it was crazy. You will eat that shit up. Eat it up. But when it comes to me, but exactly. then it's like I really had, honestly, the best thing I can to like explain that though is, is just the hurt. It's it's literally because you wouldn't have expected this specific person. Yeah. So it hurts a little bit more. It makes you a little more angry to it because it's like, damn, you? Exactly. Out of every other person that we don't have come and go, da, 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 me and you? That's in it. It hurts so yeah. bad. Girl, I'm trying not to cry. It <laughs> hurts so bad. And it's like, I true, like I said, I truly do wish her the best. Mm-hmm, and I hope course. and pray that her and her relationship and her baby is all great and stuff. But it really did hurt. And it really took a lot from me because she was kind of like the only, well, she's not the only best friend I had. I have my cousin, but... My cousin have her own life. Yeah. So she was really the only friend I could talk to who was really a friend I could go to for anything. Yeah. And I know she's not going to judge me. I know she's not going to say nothing, vice versa. But it's like now that she's not in my life, I'm not going to lie. Everything's okay. been great. It's been fine. And yes. I thought that I couldn't do it without mm-hmm. her because we had we didn't talk for a little bit once we was in high school because, you know, she had her own thing going on. But she was still my friend. But we recently got back close, maybe like four or five years ago. And then it was like, okay, we go to each other's house. She was staying yeah. up north. and like, It was just a whole good thing. But it's like, I didn't think that I could not not have her as a friend. Yeah. But since I haven't had her as a friend, so many good things have been happening. I'm mm-hmm. not saying she was a downfall, but I'm saying that Sometimes maybe it's a blockage. Maybe it was a block. Because you no longer resonated with that person yeah. with that situation with that energy anymore so now it's kind of like okay where is it's time to elevate it's yeah. time to and it's never to say that she's not on your level or whatever or no. that the person just can't get there mm-hmm. two different places two different places and two different times and i had to realize that you know what i was born by myself at the end of the day yeah. you know what i'm saying i'm i'm working on that part still yeah, yeah. I, it's, it, every day is a journey, and don't get me wrong. We like you made me mm-hmm. talk on here like I'm perfect, girl. I'm not. I mm-hmm. still cuss. Mm-hmm. I still do a whole bunch of other stuff. But I try to go to church every Sunday. I try to read every my Bible. Day. I try, but I will quick to go back and be like, I will lay my holy hands on you real freaking quick. Like, I'm, I'm healing. <laughs> I'm not there completely yeah. just yet. Because then you gonna get the person you don't want to see. Because mm-hmm. that's what I'm trying to tell people. Like y'all don't want to see her. I try to keep her in a little Pandora box, but she will come out if you try it. <laughs> Shit, at that point, it ain't even Pandora's box. Shit, it's a jack in the box. Keep playing. Well, let's let's wrap this up. It was so nice talking to you. She will be on my podcast again, you guys. Okay, so you stay in mm-hmm. tune. Like I said, black women, we are beautiful. We are resilient. We could cry together. We could do everything together because black women are powerful. Peace. <laughs>